Let's talk about the LSU Tigers. Because LSU challenged Georgia in the SEC title game, found a way in year one to get to Atlanta, which I think in itself is impressive when their preseason win total was pegged right around seven wins. And they were won six games the year before. Like LSU, I think, is a fascinating situation right now. I'm very interested to see what their spring game looks like. The first word of caution I would give is Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be your backup quarterback. So do not be surprised when he has a better game in this spring game than your starting quarterback, Jaden Daniels. Because think about what Garrett Nussmeyer is. You and I both you know, kind of have a guilty pleasure in the fact that we just love to see them throw the football vertically, anybody and everybody, especially LSU, and we haven't seen that as much from them with Jaden Daniels playing quarterback. Garrett Nussmeyer is going to uncork it a little bit. Wouldn't it be surprised if he connects on a few of those and has a couple of highlight plays? Like Garrett Nussmeyer may have a better highlight day than Jaden Daniels. Well, what does Jaden Daniels do best? What's his differentiating factor from Garrett Nussmeyer? His legs. Ran for 11 touchdowns last year. Does a lot in the zone read game. Like he is a dynamic athlete as well as a really good quarterback. Notice what I didn't say. I didn't say he's a really good athlete playing quarterback. He's a really good athlete. He's also a really good quarterback. They coexist well. But for him, a lot of his game, in my opinion, is him running the football and setting himself up to throw. In the spring football game, quarterbacks are non-contact, meaning nobody is tackling Jaden Daniels to the ground. In fact, much easier, they're just two-hand touching. Y'all, just it's, it's common sense. It's easier to two-hand touch the quarterback than to tackle him to the ground, especially in Jaden Daniels' case. I'm just curious to see how comfortable Jaden Daniels looks. I want to see how comfortable he looks cutting it loose, dropping back, passing, and getting through his progressions and working with some of these other receivers that haven't gotten as much run with Keishon Booty last year and Jare Jenkins being there. Now you got a little bit of of Malik Neighbor stepping up a little bit more. Like I'm just curious to see how comfortable he looks. But I fully expect, you look at the stat sheet, Garrett Nussmeyer, common sense would tell you, should have a better day because he's more of a pocket passer. He's going to push the ball vertically more. He's playing the volume game, in my opinion. Garrett Nussmeyer, Brian Kelly also told us when he came on this show, is going to get some run with the ones. That is going to happen. Okay, so do not take the bait. Do not fall for the trap. Garrett Nussmeyer is going to look good in this spring game. Jane Daniels emphatically is your starting quarterback. Now, here's another storyline we got to look for. A lot of the national college football circles may not talk about this as much, but LSU very quietly... Witten got four defensive backs from the transfer portal. Now, Deuce Chestnut from Syracuse is out for the spring. Denver Harris doesn't sound like was at practice the other day, or I should say this, wasn't spotted at practice by our own uh, Bengal Tiger on three when they covered the, the spring practice. But what I want to say is you got some guys that are getting their feet wet for the first time in the spring football game. I believe, or you hope it's Denver Harris, the transfer from AM. and uh, J.K. Johnson, they said he looks really good, the transfer from Ohio State. Zy Alexander from Southeastern Louisiana, the FCS All-American. And also, to add on to that, not a transfer, but a guy who's making noise in his first few minutes on campus, Javion Toviano out of Texas, getting some work at secondary. He's listed as a corner on the roster. I'm just curious to see how they look in this spring game, and even more specifically, I want to see who looks the most confident. Because y'all that watch this game know it takes some extra juice to play corner. Like literally your job is running backwards with the best athletes on the field at receiver, probably getting beat once or twice and being able to to respond and bounce back. Which one of these guys does that the best? Because LSU, they're going to have some new faces playing corner. They, They very obviously think this is a position of need because they went out and got it in bulk. And good for Brian Kelly and good for his staff for saying, we got a need. We're going to make sure we throw a lot of numbers at it. We're going to get it done. Which one of these guys attacks that opportunity? Again, J.K. Johnson's a guy they're very excited about. And I would be surprised if he doesn't get some major run in this spring football game. Who looks the most confident? Who has a bad play and then bounces back? In a perfect world, you have no bad plays, but you hear what I'm saying. The response mechanism from these guys is going to be crucial, especially when we get to real football. Okay, now here's the thing that I'm probably most curious about. Operationally, how does LSU look? Are they picking up from where they left off? Because think about last year's season for LSU, and I think about it as pre Auburn and post Auburn. That Auburn game, especially for Jaden Daniels and for LSU as a whole, is really when they kind of caught their stride. 
and they've got a ton of talent, ton of ability, but it was just week in and week out, which kind of LSU team were we going to see? Against Ole Miss, they're rolling. Start out slow, but then they get rolling and roll past LSU, or excuse me, roll past Ole Miss. Then LSU goes and beats Alabama the next week. Like, they were a force at one point in the year. And then they end the year and they lose Texas A&M. The same Texas A&M team that actually missed a bowl game. So for LSU, I think a lot of it is the sense of urgency. And to be real with you, a spring football game, if you're ever going to lack a sense of urgency, it's going to be when you've got a ton of people in the stadium. There's no real competitive juices that need to be flowing. You're not playing it against another color jersey. You can kind of just enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the fanfare, soak it all in. Everyone's there rooting for you and your teammates. Like If you were to take your foot off the gas in any scenario, the spring game would be a situation where that would be very, very possible. But the great teams, the teams that win the SEC, the teams that win national championships, and I'm not just talking about Georgia, I'm talking about a variety of teams across the landscape, those teams, they take the spring game seriously. They look like the spring game is the exact same atmosphere as when they're playing their rival. Obviously, it's not contact for the quarterback. Obviously, you know, that there's a certain element of protecting each other that goes into this. But you hear what I'm saying, the attention to detail, the procedural penalties for LSU. I don't want to see those. I want to see effort penalties if I see any penalties at all. That means balls in the air. We're jockeying back and forth, pass interference on the corner. Okay, we can live with that. I can't live with, hey, we were just straight up beat and we pulled that guy down. That's a bad, not competitive penalty. Or we're misaligned. Whatever it ends up being, I'm just curious to see operationally, is LSU able to have the culture in place? Is the culture mature enough to where they can compete in the spring game how you would want a team to compete that you expect to play for the SEC championship? I think they have the right systems in place. But again, with Brian Kelly, we thought it was fixed to LSU as soon as he got hired. I was sold on LSU the minute he was the head coach. The only question is, how long will it take for them to to fully buy in. I think there was buy in last year, but full buy in, full understanding of what he's expecting, full understanding of the standards, the expectations. That's where LSU can really take the next step. And the spring game could give us a good gauge for it. I'm not saying if they have a couple offsides penalties, they're just going to compete for the Gator Bowl. I'm not saying that. No shade to the Gator Bowl. But I just think it will give us a good pulse as to how mature and how developed this culture is at LSU. Because the talent's not the issue, man. The talent has never been the issue in Baton Rouge, and it's definitely not going to be the issue now. Got a lot of key pieces coming back. Curious to see how they look in this spring game coming up. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.